one great scientist has told his servant to make the mason, the, the plumber, to make two doors, right? So one is very big and the other one is very small. So the mason or the plumber was surprised. Why did the man order to make two doors? One is small, the other one is big. He was surprised. He did not want to do it. He wanted to make him understand that two doors are not necessary. One door is enough. But the scientist, the great man, insisted the plumber or the mason to make two doors. When the doors were made, later the mason or the plumber asked the great man, why did he tell him to make two doors? And then the scientist or the great person said that, hey, stupid, you don't know. You, have, you know, in this room, there will be two. One is a cow, the bullock, and the other one uh, will be a goat. So what will happen? The cow, the bull, the ox will enter the room uh, through this big door and the goat will uh, enter or exit uh, the small door, right? But the silly thing is you understand, it's not necessary. The bullock can enter and exit in uh, via the big I mean, door and the goat can also uh, enter and exit the small door. The same thing, one door is enough. So such a great man makes a severe mistake. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's a stupid person. There are two other persons, Isaac Newton, everybody knows, he was sitting with his girlfriend and probably he was holding her hand and at the time a, an apple dropped and he was surprised. He did not enjoy the time with his girlfriend. He was thinking, he was pondering over the matter, why the apple dropped below, why it did not go up or side. He was surprised and he tried to light his cigarette and it burned the girlfriend's finger, something like that, and then she ran away. She did not return to him. She, she thought that he was a mad. So mad, you understand, there are two kinds of mad people. The general mad people are stupid. They don't, don't have any IQ. They don't have any knowledge. They do not have good clothes. They do not have anything organized. Similarly, great people may not have the same uh, knowledge, I mean, uh, similarities. They have similarities. So one is stupid, mad, and the other one is genius. So a mad and a genius persons are very much identical outwardly, unless you go about them and research on them, and then you can get, you can uh, take, I mean, understand. So Thomas Alva Edison, he thought that as chicken, uh, I mean, uh, what happens? The hen sits on the eggs. And at some, after some days, the chickens are hatched. The eggs uh, burst and chickens get out. And Thomas Alva Edison thought the same thing. He was sitting for a long time. He was brooding and it did not work. So he was a stupid person. No, he was a genius person. So a genius person, a scholarly person, a philosopher, and a mad person are very similar. So what is important is knowledge. If you are a very stupid person, you cannot understand, you cannot distinguish a mad person from a genius one, a genius person from a mad person. So the most important thing is that if you have very little knowledge, you are mad. If you have excessive knowledge, then you are also mad. Likely over 20 person, if you have intelligence, then you are fine. And over 80 person intelligence, if you have, you are genius. But the general people will think that you are a stupid person. Because the lifestyle of a mad person and a genius person are very similar. You have to understand this. So be careful. Find out who is genius and find out who is mad. Rasulullah was a simple person. But the people did not understand he was the best person on earth created by Allah. Right. So whatever he used to say was sent via a messenger by Allah, by God, right? So whatever he said, his followers used to follow. But the followers of, were very few. 
those who followed him won the race. In the hereafter, they will be sitting beside Rasulullah. So you have to understand there may be genius beside you. If you understand the genius persons, you can save yourself. Socrates was a genius person. He was the he was the father of Western philosophy, but he was not understood. Nobody came to him. He used to go to people and tell them to do things that were better, told them not to do what were bad. So the, he was making them more and more intelligent. He was trying to find fault with them, tried to direct them in a right way. But they did not understand. It. They understood Socrates he was a genius person. He was the best philosopher. He was the most helpful person. And people would have learned, would have been helped by Socrates a lot. So genius people are around. You have to understand. If you look at the stone, I said that everyone has a stone. But genius people have their stones turned into a touch stone. Right? Touch stone. If you touch a simple um, um, pebble to touch stone, the pebble will turn into touch stone. So if you have a great person around you, if you are around him, if you always listen to him, if you are in contact with him, he can help you. You will not be in danger. You will learn without going to school like Socrates. Plato became great because he was in contact with Socrates and Plato, Aristotle was also great because he, he was in contact with Plato, understand? And King Philip II, he was the most intelligent person, he understood that so Aristotle is the most important person. If his son is taught by Aristotle, his son can win all over the world, right? So he was taken as, he was uh, employed as the home tutor of his own son Alexander. Later he became Alexander the Great. And that's how Alexander becomes so great. As he was interested in acquiring land, country, wars, what happens? He became, he was the, he became um, Alexander the Great. He won all the lands, he, he invaded all the lands and he won all the wars, right? So it was all because the knowledge was taken by, was taught by, uh, Aristotle. So the most important thing is that even even when you are an ordinary person, if you are around an extraordinary person, then you can become an extraordinary person too. So same thing with um, uh, you see uh, metaphysical poets, right? Uh, they were uh, right metaphysical poets. There were a bunch of metaphysical poets, and they were born almost at the same time when they were together one person uh, was a metaphysical poet and in contact with uh, this person the other poets also became metaphysical poet i'm talking about john dunn john dunn was the greatest metaphysical poet and andrew and many others they also became metaphysical poets so the most important thing is that if you get someone around you who looks like a mad person, but you have to understand whether he is the most genius person. If you find he is the most genius person, he is a great philosopher, then you stick to him, you stay with him. At one point you will find that you are also acquiring a lot of knowledge. So Rabindranath first became philosopher, so he does not go and pitch a glass, a bottle of water or a bucket of water. The water I'm talking about is of knowledge. He doesn't go to bring a bucket of knowledge that is a bucket of water, no. From the hills, from everywhere, all the water pours into an ocean. So the ocean is the brain, the head of uh, Aristotle, Rabindranath, Socrates, like that. Uh, every time water is pouring in the uh, in the river in the ocean. Similarly, knowledge is pouring in uh, into the head, the brains of such a, a bunch of great people. So you can easily become a great person if you are around a great person, right? So this is most important. You have to find out who is genius, who is ordinary, who is mad. 
and you have to understand the difference between a mad and a great person, a genius person. Outwardly, a mad person and a genius person are the same, but inwardly, they are absolutely, diametrically opposite. General people have knowledge maybe between 20 to 70 percent, right? But genius people have more than 80 percent knowledge. Stupid, madly people have less than 20 percent of knowledge. So this is vital. Try to understand the value of staying in contact with a great person. Thank you. That's it for now.